y'all looking so clueless. What's up, guys? We made it to Texas. So we are at Porsche Dallas, who are just being so generous and lending us some cars to drive while we're down here. I may or may not be on the allocation list for a GT4, so uh, Patrick, our hookup guy, is putting me in a GT4 because I have not driven it yet. So comment below if I should buy this. I know we're just in the start of the video. <laughs> Don't be scared. Jeez Louise. Yeah. I'm a professional race car driver. My credentials are I am Damon Bailey and I can drive a car. We only do manual here. They're like, do you want a PDK or do you want manual? That's what I said to that. I'm at the top of my game. It's only Christ to blame. We know the reason you change. Diamonds and dollars and chains. How about you? So we are down here in Texas. Um, a little over a year ago, we bought into uh, FitCon. This is the first FitCon in Texas. And then we have some other locations that we're looking at. We want to expand FitCon to just be all over the United States. So that is why we're down here. So we got down here early so we can check out the place, drive some nice cars. Right now we're going to where uh, Rob bought his airplane. So we're going to tour. And actually, Porsche Dallas is where he got his GT2 RS. So that's how, how we know Patrick. So we're going to all the places Rob buys things today. <laughs> Let's drive there fast. What else should we buy when we're in Texas? Oh, this is, <laughs> this is an expensive plane. Listen, listen. GT4. Dana, we can only buy one thing at a time. Uh, an airplane? We already have an airplane. GTS. This one's sick. What was your uh, first car? My first car I ever bought myself that I bought was a Honda Civic DX model. <laughs> My first car I learned how to drive on was a, a Hyundai, I forget all the names of it, but it was a little Hyundai, looked like a little blue jelly bean. My dad taught me how to drive stick. <laughs> As a child, he'd let me shift, he'd tell me when to shift. So my first car I drove, drove, um, it wasn't mine, I borrowed. It was a Geo Storm. Talk about class. That's what I drove all through high school. Super cool, blasting Tupac. Uh, but then once I was in college and made enough money where I could buy a whopping $4,000 vehicle, it was a Honda Civic DX. I had to roll the windows. It was terrible. Rob had a Honda Accord drop to the ground. Um, that thing. And it was purple. It was like periwinkle. So when we first started dating, oh, he's going. We're going. Hold on. Let's catch up.
they were like, oh, this has four miles on it. Rob, here, go enjoy yourself. Here you go. Check. All right, follow me, soy boys. <laughs> we need the exhaust for that. Exhaust button. Here. Exhaust button on. <laughs> That's a rough life. Uh, I'm just very thankful that Rob has a lot of passion and drive and I just follow his lead. I'm a really good executor. He's he's the visionary. I'm just an executor. So give me a task, I will execute the <laughs> And it's weird because growing up, no one ever really told me that you can do whatever you want. And no one pushed me to like, hey, you could actually try out for the World Cup like soccer team. I'm old now, I'm 38 now. I feel like I missed my chance, but like if I went back in time and like someone actually pushed me and told me to like, hey, you literally can do whatever you want. Um, I was sort of like pigeonholed and I didn't know what I wanted. So my whole fam, I come from a whole family they're all teachers and I just chose things that I liked and I liked kids and I liked sports and I liked to play so I was like yeah this is this is what I'll do I'll be a health and PE teacher I didn't have anyone in my life until Rob that literally said like you literally can do whatever you want it's really cool because you can and is there risks yes there was a lot of risks. There's a lot of things growing up, like starting Flagner Fail, that like, yeah, there was a lot of risks. There was years where we had zero money, but we were just pushing and pushing and believing. And like the worst case scenario, like if we lost everything, we'd still be okay. Cause like we came from living, I remember the first house we like lived in, it looked like the Fight Club house and we would eat Eggo waffles, because we had no money. We'd eat Eggo waffles on the back porch of Fight Club House, and our table was made out of like tires and wood, plywood. <laughs> and that was like some of the best times of our life. So knowing that like I can lose everything, I'd still be okay as long as like we're together, don't need much. Is driving 911 super cool? <laughs> Yeah, but I know I can also be cool without them. I think a lot of times what people don't realize is like if you don't write things down, like Rob talks a lot about like having a vision board um, like on his podcast and whatnot. If you don't write something down, it's never going to happen. I think it was maybe a little bit before we started to flag or fail because I was I was still competing on like a an amateur level, and we sat down and we literally wrote out every goal imaginable. And like I know my goals because I was in fitness, so I was dead last, getting dead last in figure competitions. But I wanted to be like a, a quote unquote fitness model. I wanted to be on the cover of magazines. I wanted to be writing for magazines. I wanted my own gym. I wanted to, <laughs> it's funny because like, I just wanted to get to the Olympia. Winning it wasn't even on my vision board. <laughs> I just wanted, because I just didn't even think that was imaginable, like fathomable me winning it. Um, I just wanted to get to the Olympia because I didn't think it was possible. I'm dead last in figure, just dead last every show. Uh, but yeah, 
and it's weird in a couple years we literally checked off every single one of them and then went far past like not only did I get to the Olympia I won the thing the first year they had it for my division so I think the the moral of the story is you need you need to have like if you if you are not happy with where you're at be happy you only live once so you might you have to enjoy it so the first things first is sit down and write down what the fuck you want to do write down what you want to do because if you don't write it down it's literally never going to happen so create that vision board for yourself and then work as hard as you freaking can to accomplish it everyone has the same amount of hours in the day it's how you spend them and uh, there were many years where like we sacrificed our relationship we sacrificed sleep we sacrificed a lot to get where we're at and now that we're here where we're at now we can actually enjoy our lives we can drive fancy cars we can take vacations so we spent 10 years not doing any of that and now we get to actually enjoy everything we work so freaking hard for so write down your goals and then do everything you can to just chase them and once you catch them like we've caught ours so now we have to make new goals <laughs> now it's time to eat